Chibi the Podcast, presented by Just Chibi Productions. Hi there. I'm your host, Fondue. I'm Chibi. In this week's episode, we're going to learn all about American cheese. Ooh. We're going to talk about Switzerland. What? Craft plastic, and the FDA. We're also going to find out the five most popular cheeses in the world. Nice. And of course, no episode will be complete without our very cheesy joke. Ha ha joke. Stay tuned for episode 131, Slice of America, on Just Cheesy, the podcast. According to NationalToday.com, May is American Cheese Month. Yay! And while most of us here in the United States know the cheese, maybe others don't. Oh. According to Cheese.com, American cheese is made with cow's milk. Ooh. It's made in the USA. Yeah. It's semi-soft. Okay. It's processed. It's smooth. It's rindless. Ooh. And its color is, they say here, yellow, yellow, but I know we all know it as more of an orange color. Yeah. And according to them, the cheese is known for its mild, creamy taste and smooth uniform. Uniform texture. Yeah. But did you know this type of cheese was not invented in the USA? It wasn't? Nope. It was invented in Switzerland what? by two food chemists. Holy cow. Walter Gerber and Fritz Stetler created the cheese back in 1911. Whoa. They were trying to extend the shelf life of cheese. Oh. Their experiments were around hard Swiss called Emmental, and they combined it with sodium citrate. Whoa. They say the cheese was smooth and velvety, and that it boasted a shelf life, and I quote, that could only be described as immoral. Mortal. And according to Wikipedia, it says they were influenced by fondue and other cheese sauces. Oh. They wanted to melt the cheese, they emulsified it, okay. and they found it could be recooled into a solid again. What's emulsify? Well, it's not as scary as you think. Okay. According to thoughtco.com, an emulsifier keeps compounds from separating. Oh. And if you think of some dressings where you've got oil and vinegar, yeah, yeah. they don't actually combine well. Oh, yeah. So you can either add a, an emulsifier or you could do it mechanically by shaking it or blending it. Right. And they even give some emulsifier examples like egg yolks. Oh. In mayonnaise, it keeps the oil from separating out. Oh. In mustard, there's a chemical around the seed that acts as an emulsifier. Really? And right around 1916, a Canadian-American businessman got into the action. Ooh. This is none other than, guess, guess. Kraft. That's right. James L. Kraft applied for the first U.S. patent covering a new method of storing cheese in 1916. Whoa. They talk here a little bit about the advantages of processed cheese. Really? According to hsph.harvard.edu, they describe processed foods. And they say here it's generally thought that they're inferior to unprocessed foods. Why? They suggest that a processed food includes many ingredients, like artificial colors or flavors. Oh. They're referred to as convenience food or pre-prepared foods, yeah. or they suggest that they contribute to obesity yep. or illness. Yeah, yeah. But this definition of processed food varies oh. depending on the source. Really? The USDA defines a processed food as one that has undergone any changes to its natural state. Whoa. So they say any raw egg agricultural commodity is subjected to washing, cleaning, milling, cutting, chopping, heating, pasteurizing, blanching, cooking, canning, freezing, drying, dehydrating, mixing, Whoa. packaging, or other procedures that alter the food from its natural state. Jeez. They go on to say it can include the addition of other ingredients like preservatives, flavors, nutrients, and other food additives Whoa. like salt, sugar, or fat. Wow. The Institute of Food Technologists includes additional processing terms Whoa. like sorting, filtering, fermenting, extracting, concentrating, microwaving, and packaging. Wow. So I guess by this definition, every food that you buy is processed. Yeah. They say here, even apples in the produce aisle undergo four or more processing steps before being sold. Really? And this is because food begins to deteriorate and loses nutrients as soon as it's harvested. Whoa. With that in mind, again, Wikipedia said that there are advantages to processed cheese. Sure. This includes a far longer shelf life. Yep. It's got resistance to separating when cooked. Ooh. It's got a uniform look yeah. and a uniform physical behavior. Oh, yeah. It's mass produced yep. and that gives it dramatically lower cost Whoa. to both the producer and the consumers. Nice. And this even gave much faster production and a steady supply of food. Wow. Processed cheese is not a sponsor, nope. but if it was, the ad would go right here. Have you ever wanted to listen to the web? Yeah. Well, Newsly makes that possible. They do? They're an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. Super app. You can listen to trending articles on the web on 
topics that you choose and get them read to you in a natural human voice. What kind of topics? Sports, cheese, tech, business, cheese, science. Cheese. I'm sure there's even cheese. Yay! They even have an entire section for podcasts. Are we there? Of course we are. Ooh. It's one of my new favorite podcast apps. They even have digital radio. Holy cow. Just go to www.newsly.me to download it free Whoa. or use the link in the description. If you use the promo code CHEESY, Cheesy. that'll get you one month free premium subscription. Yay, Newsly. Now, back to the podcast. So James Kraft was experimenting with heating and cooling cheeses to form a warm cheese that was easier to slice and convenient for distribution. Wow. He wanted to create a long-lasting cheese that could be shipped. Okay. And you have to remember, at the time, people were making fresh cheese at home. Yeah. So it wasn't always able to be shipped, and it didn't have a long shelf life. Aww. Kraft wanted to bring this convenience to millions of Americans. Ooh. During World War I and World War II, American troops were able to enjoy this food. Yeah. But extended shelf life wasn't the only idea that Kraft had. Really? And James's brother, Norman, wanted to make things even easier for the consumer. Nice. He wanted to pre-cut the cheese into slices. Cut the cheese. According to NewYorkTimes.com, it was easier said than done. Really? This cheese was still packaged and sealed while hot. Ooh. And cutting hot cheese was like, <laughs> they say here, like trying to slice molten lava. Ooh. He initially poured some of the liquefied cheese onto a cold stainless steel table back in 1935. Whoa. He flattened it out with an iced rolling pin. Really? And then he was able to slice it. Ooh. And apparently it took over 15 years for the engineers to perfect the technology to bring the product to market. Holy cow. They described the manufacturing process that had an elaborate contraption that ran liquid pasteurized cheese through a chill roll. Oh. And this machine resembled a large rolling pin. Ooh. The roll created a long ribbon of cheese. Okay. It was cut into three inch square slices. Ooh. Eight slices were stacked on top of one another. Oh, yeah. And they were packaged to create a peelable block. Whoa. These slices came out back in 1950. Wow. And can you imagine American cheese being viewed as elitist and inaccessible? What? In the 1950s advertisements, they touted these slices as perfect in shape, flavor, and convenience. Ooh. The sheer fact that it came pre-packaged was seen as a luxury. Wow. But the cheese as we know it today didn't actually come into fruition until 1956. Wow. An Indiana-born engineer named Arnold Naraki shocked the processed cheese world with a patent for... I quote, apparatus for producing individually wrapped cheese slices. Wow. They said that the cheese slices often stuck together yeah. and it was considerably difficult to try to separate the individual slices without tearing them. Right. He came up with a method for wrapping a slice-like slab of cheese in a transparent pliant wrapper. Wow. And their individually wrapped slices were introduced in 1965. Wow. Kraft slices are wrapped in plastic. Yeah. But American cheese is not made of plastic. Oh. According to Sporked.com, there is some confusion with the definition. Oh, yeah. The FDA says that various processed cheese products say that cheeses and other added ingredients like whey, milk solids, and emulsifying agents in pasteurized processed cheese food products must be mixed into a, quote, homogeneous plastic mass. Ooh. But the term plastic is actually talking about the texture and pliability of the cheese. Oh. It's known for being smooth, flexible, and moldable in consistency, and okay. this is because of the manufacturing process. Ah. It becomes soft and meltable, and this is similar to the characteristics of plastic in terms of flexibility and shape retention. Okay. But it is not actually plastic. Whew. CelloCheese.com has an article that talks about the five most popular cheeses in the world. Ooh. And did you know American cheese made the list? Whoa. Their list goes as follows. Cheddar cheese. Nice. Mozzarella cheese. Yum. Parmesan cheese. Ooh. American cheese. Aww. And cream cheese. Nice. They suggest that American cheese is a top cheese for sandwiches. Wow. Like grilled cheese and layered with lunch meat. I'm ready for a joke fondue. Okay. Why is American cheese lonely? I don't know. Because it's processed as a single. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Oh, I know. It was pretty good. And a little bit cheesy. Thanks for listening to Just Cheesy, the podcast, episode 131, Slice of America. Thank you. Check out our next two episodes as we talk about different types of American cheeses. Yeah. And don't forget to send us your very cheesy jokes. And stay cheesy.
easy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>